hey, before we get to today's episode, me and Frank have an announcement, don't we, Frank? Oh, boy, do we. It's always dog-sucking season, and now you can celebrate with your very own dog-sucking merch, bitch. Oh, now listen, we hate to have to do it to you guys, but if you're going to rep dog-sucking season, you need to live dog-sucking season. And now you can with these new shirts. Frank and Joe's beautiful dog-sucking glizzy shop is open for business. Plump, juicy glizzies. With all the trimmings. <laughs> now, we, we, we leave those trimmings up to you, but nonetheless, send us a picture of you sucking a dog in this. That's it. And boy, oh boy, it'll make our dogs grow. Available now at the thesanagatoshop.com. Welcome back to the baby. Welcome back to, I was going to say Santa Gata Studios, that's not what I was going to say. Welcome well, back to the basement yard. It's all the same thing. It's, it's true. all the same thing. Welcome back to the basement yard. Thank Frank, you. how's it going? I love your shirt. Thank you so much. Nuffleupagus, one of my favorite Sesame Street characters up there in my just top Just another three. one of your adult shirts, but I do like <laughs> it. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hold on. This yeah. was purchased because of my daughter's birthday party. We had a Sesame Street birthday party. Did you wear that one? Yes, I did. Oh, I don't. She, she loves Elmo. She's a big Elmo fan. Well, aren't we all? One of her first words. Elmo. Wow, before Dada? Before, well, Dada, Elmo come hand in hand, so fucking careful. I don't know how that... Uh, but And I you know, got my Snuffleupagus. Miles was a cookie monster. Of course. Obviously. He loves cookies. He's a big cookie guy. Uh, and I don't know if Becca wore one. And if she did, I forget, and I'm sorry. But... Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that was why, the whole thing. That's why, yeah, that's the whole super interesting story I have. Perfect. Guys, before we move forward with this episode, I just want to, again, plug everything bagel hot sauce... We sold out it's of, back. of the first uh, fucking order that we had. Did not expect it to sell out that fast, so we were sold out for a little bit there. But we are back in stock, and it will be hard to sell this stock out. Trust me. Yes. Uh, and we got we got another order coming behind it. So go get yourself some more of the Everything Bagel Hot well, Sauce and try it if you haven't already. Frankie is like give a Give me a little bump. Fiend. Give me a little bump. I'm already all I, – I bought five bottles. I gave one uh, to some of my uh, uh, family – uh, not like they all got one, right? Um, and then I need to buy more for the rest of my family, and then more for me because I'm already out of two bottles, right? So I just like every now and then I just like a little bumpski. I did you put crack in here? No, I did not. I God, put... God, he's not in here. He's not. <laughs> uh, I uh, I just made everything bagel hot sauce chicken the oh. other night, and it was fucking good, dude. What did I put? I put this on a chicken uh. uh chicken sandwich the other day and then I, and Becca made me an egg sandwich mm. oh penis penis was out that day oh yeah <laughs> penis. <laughs> penis was out that day um but yeah, yeah I, if, I mean I, I the take, only thing is this right so I make chicken in the in the air fryer now right that's, I do too yeah so you bread that bitch you dredge no, it no I don't dredge that shit dredge it yeah dude I just try to keep it regular chicken but the only thing is so if you're, you're gonna make your it your boyish figure you fucking no you idiot bitch so uh, when I made it with that sauce, I just had like all the chicken on a, like a like a cutting board or whatever, and then I put um, the hot sauce on it, and I just kind of like mushed it up, and then, yes, you had raw chicken on a wood cutting board. No. Okay. We're making progress, <laughs> Joey. No. So I uh, did all that, and then I put it in the in the air fryer, dude. When you open the air fryer, yeah. Watch your eyes. Yeah, yeah. Especially because the with spices hot, hit you. Especially with hot sauce. You know, you're basically yeah. like, it's like mustard gas coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, The, the sauce definitely molested my eyes yeah. on the way I, out. And listen, you know, obviously I'm not only a shill because you're my best friend, but also because you're my employer. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I I highly recommend this stuff. Yeah, so it's really good. Make sure you go check it out. Uh, go to hedonist.com or go to secrethandshake.shop to get it, by the way. Everything bagel hot sauce, or just type it in Google. I'm sure sure it'll show up. Go. This is a challenge. You're saying we can't sell out of this this restock? I bet we can, bitch. Well, maybe. I bet we fucking can. I I I will support anyone here. That let's just get it all done together as a community. You know, people go on fucking Kickstarter and get thousands of dollars for people that are sick. Let's just fucking do this. Uh, that's GoFundMe. It's not. That's it. Kickstarter. That's right. I mean, tomato potato. You know. They're very different platforms. They're, actually. they're kind of similar. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> they're kind of, kind of, kind of. I don't know about all that, Frank. Um, uh, but I wanted to start today with a story. Yeah. Um, so come in close, everybody. That honestly sounded like a priest. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to start this mass with, with a story. The story. Yeah. Of no, Abraham. Uh, this isn't. Trust me. This ain't church. Uh, yeah. No. And um, I went to uh, water park. Uh, the water park, the uh, the 
DreamWorks Water Park. It's like called like the Wetland or some shit like that at, at the American Dream Mall. You went to the Wetlands. I went to the Wetlands and the Meadowlands. I've driven by it. I've never been inside. Yeah, it's pretty fucking nuts. Like, it's huge. Bro, insane. It's an indoor water park. It's like the largest one on the fucking northern hemisphere or some shit or whatever it said. <laughs> when you got to break things down by hemisphere, we, we're going a bit too far. I forgot hemispheres were a thing until yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. I just haven't heard that. Are we on the western or eastern hemisphere? What? Eastern. Uh, the I don't west. Know. I don't know. The West is, is like Japan, isn't it? That's well, the West. I think I think it's all like a matter. It's like subjective because it's whoever came up with it first when they, you like you consider yourself the center of it. There has to be an answer, I believe. I'm sure there is an answer because it was created by the whites. Also, long, longitude and latitude, easy. Do you remember those? Long ways. Yes, and latter. What does that mean? Latitude is like a ladder. Oh, I, I was thinking just the like rungs of a I, ladder. When I think like I think lateral. Oh, yeah. Well, the, that's probably the, the... You thought it latter? Well, that's how I fucking pass earth science, bitch. Don't fucking talk about me like I that. I got a 95 in earth science. Failed I, every other science I ever had, but earth science, 95. Earth science was a bit easy, I have to admit. It, Bro, the rocks? I was crushing the rocks. What are the three types of rocks? We've gone over this. Uh, sed 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 sedimentary. Yep, sedimentary, igneous. Igneous, and, and obviously the last one, my favorite one. Your favorite one. The easiest the one. The easiest one to remember, Joey. We're going to say it at the same time. Three, two, two one. one. Do, are you going to say it? I'm going to say it. Uh, you don't know what it is. I know what it is. You don't know. I know what it starts with. What does it start with? I'm asking you. I know what it starts with. I know what it starts with. All right, we're going to say it on I count of three. I know what it starts and ends One, with. two, two three. three. Metamorphic. metamorphic. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> That's the easiest thing you ever Give me a type me. of metamorphic rock. Three, two, two one. one. Marble. Marble. <laughs> See, that's a, this is so. I mean, do you have any questions? Any other questions? I know rocks. Dude. Yeah. Oh, do you? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. What is uh? What kind of rock is pumice? Pumice. Pumice. No, that's no. 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 <laughs> no. What? Pumice. That's not. A, it's not that you're lying. No. But maybe the pronunciation is off because I know how to pronounce things correctly. Pumice oh. doesn't really sound. Oh, familiar. okay. You know, like the the rock that people scrape their feet with in the bath and or in, at spas. It's called pumice. Yeah. What are you asking me? What kind of rock is it? It's a. It's a. That's a metamorphic. No. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, <laughs> it's igneous, Joe. Well, we didn't we didn't really study the uh, rocks that you, uh, we use as humans. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You just know that there are three types of rocks. You no, don't know I which know. ones fit into which categories. All right. Whatever. There well, is. how are oh, you? Obviously, you guys went over how igneous rocks are created. Yeah, by the earth. Yes, yes, but and specifically, Jesus. it's we'll say it together. It's the rapid Ra cooling of magma. Well, yeah, that and, and lava. Also, well, also, technically, the answer to all of this is uh, God. God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is what I was going to say, is that God made all these things. God didn't. And it. technically, if you want to say lava, sure. But when, at the we, end go, of the day. when we go up the ladder, it really gets to God. Yeah, I mean, at, exactly. Like, uh, everything that happens here is under your umbrella. Everything that happens on Earth is under God's umbrella. So. 95. <laughs> That's what I got in that class. <laughs> okay. Uh, but we went to the, bro, the water park is fucking ridiculous. Yeah. It is absolutely insane. Uh, and the worst people in the world go to water parks. Like, a, lot of, a lot of butts? There were butts everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Man butts, lady butts. There were butts yeah. everywhere. Wow. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> it's just like, it's, people are just like fucking fiends in these places in water parks. When was the last time you went to a water park? Um, was it Splish Splash out on Long Island? I don't know. The last time I went there. Was it Lake Compounds? That place is fun. Have you ever you know, been? I've never been there. Wow. That place yeah. is super fucking fun. I think the last one I went to was probably... Um, wait, no. I didn't even go to one in like Disney or anything. I don't know. Damn. It's a lot of fun. But the people there are just fucking psychotic and just are always running for everything, even though there's a sign that say, don't fucking run. Yeah. But the story that I'm telling for the sake of the, the episode... Is we were leaving. It was me, Becca, and Miles. You brought him for his birthday. Cute, cute, cute. Did you paint your face? I didn't paint my face. Loser. I didn't. Shrek was there, though. Shrek? Bro, Shrek was there. Because it's a DreamWorks What fucking... kind of Shrek? Shrek. Full, full head sh Shrek. I don't know why. I... What does that mean? I sh like, he didn't... It was not like a guy who painted his face. Quickly. No, no, no. It was full, full on Shrek. Full on Shrek. Full on Shrek. And we're walking out. And Becca's like, look, before we leave, I just need to take a picture with Shrek. We're like, all right, cool. We're walking. And she Shrek needs to? What the fuck? She want, hey, don't you fucking... Just say My I wife wanted to see Shrek. Yeah, wanting and needing are t two different things. She, it both, they go hand in hand sometimes, you son of a bitch. Okay. Uh, and we're passing by, and like Shrek is like fucking basically sprinting and being held like by a handler. 
And they're and he's like, Shrek has to go, guys. We like stop. We were like, oh, Shrek. And they were like, Shrek needs to go. He has dinner with Fiona. Yeah, this shit so bad, uh, bro. So bad, yeah. probably. And it was super hot in that place. But as we were leaving, there was a photo booth. He has dinner with Fiona. That's what he said. He's like, he has dinner with Fiona. And we were like, do you think they pull out the hot Fiona or the big green ugly one? Bro, they were trying to make a statement. They're bringing out the gross one. Yeah. You know, we, I don't mean to show my cards here, but That's human the Fiona, ugly one. human Fiona. Yeah. A little more attractive than a little dude. Ogre catch Fiona. This fucking hot Fiona is gonna catch this work. Yeah. 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 You about it? Yeah, and it really depends with um on setting with the ogre Fiona, because it's all not that bad. I mean, uh, she's she's got she's thicker than a bowl of molasses. Let me tell you. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So uh, I'm not saying she's gross, but like, I would make would it be my first choice? I'd have one preference over yeah. the other, the human. Uh. <laughs> But as we're walking out, they have the photo booths. You know, the ones that print out, like, the fucking, you know, the strip of photos. So, a photo booth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the ones that... Bro, so we... Cute. Take our photos. Adorable. They get fucking printed out outside. Which, by the way, why do that? Why not print them out inside of the thing? That's a whole other... Yeah, privacy. Um, Bro, someone left their pictures in the photo booth thing. So Miles goes to grab our pictures out of the photo booth, and it has our pictures. Then he goes, oh, who's this? And it's a picture of a guy sucking on a fucking titty. Fire. And I was like, what are they doing? And what are they doing? You know what they're doing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't Bro, you if, see a sucking titty. You I, know what that is. I don't know if Miles has grown up enough to understand what was Come going on. on he that. used to do it. He used to do it when he was a little baby. Oh, fucking his sister's doing it right now. You, you are not wrong. I actually didn't think about that until this very second. He but, knows sucking tits, bro. This and it, it wasn't he like he played a, dumb. He was like, oh, I don't know. It wasn't like out. someone, you know, holding it she out. Had her whole fucking she, bro. She took one tit out and held it with both hands, and, like a like a fucking tear duct, like a teardrop. She held the whole thing like a gun, like a fucking, like she was ra- firing rounds off, and he was just like, Mwah. and no, was he open mouth? He was open mouth sucking. That's fire, bro. And Miles was like, "What's going?" And, and Beck and I started dying laughing. <laughs> Did you say I would have took no, it? No, we left it there, bro. I would have took a picture of it and told everyone. No, that's I can't. hilarious. I can't do that. Just like a, my child what picked if, this up and said, "What are they doing?" Bro, that's what, so funny. I mean, the story is enough for me. What if, like, I always think of, like, the movie, like, No Country for Old Men, where they, like, just, like, find, like, a briefcase of money, they take it, and the guy goes on a rampage looking for him. Yeah. What if this guy's like, yo, who took my titty-sucking picture? Well, don't they print, like, five copies? Or am Two. I... Oh, okay. So, yeah. so, clearly, the guy printed one, and then another... They took it and left. They took it. They're like, oh, cool, we got it. Left fucking one behind oh, as shit. a souvenir for somebody. So, we didn't they know... Don't. What we... were their other pictures? They're like... <laughs> You know, uh, you know, and then f- like, and listen, that's weird. We took pictures in there. Yeah. There was no indication. It was literally three, two, one, go three, two, one, go three, two, one, go. Yeah. There was no time in between second and third picture to get tit out. So they were working quick. I've never done something like that in a photo booth, but I would like to try. You got to fuck around in a photo booth. Well, you can't like fuck around, but definitely like suck a tit in a photo booth. That sounds fire, bro. This person was like legit, like they, they were sucking tit for like for a purpose. Like it wasn't like a cute like. <laughs> yeah, you know? it wasn't a joke. It wasn't a joke. He's like, no, I'm gonna suck this whole tit off. It was like, yo, we have three seconds. Give me your tit. Watch what I'll do. Fire. And it, and usually those things are done on the go. Like you don't really plan your poses. You don't. It's more like so a, she was a funny, just like, yo, I'm dumping. And he was like, I'm sucking. It's more. Yeah. You know, it's like, and you know, it was his idea too, because she clearly looked panicked. I mean, she, did she? She was. Well, she didn't have much time. She didn't have much time to get that tit out. She did. She's probably a mom though. Cause that was very, this is very motherly. You to think like, so? To like, to like feed it into a mouth. You know what? It would actually. This is like more like I'm 20 something. You but where, if, if the child is still breastfeeding age, where was the child? I'll tell you where. Not in those fucking pictures. I mean, these are people that are sucking tits in photo booths. I don't think that it's beyond them to be like, hey, mom, can you watch the baby? We're going to go you know suck what? a tit at the water park. The, the morality game is not being played when you're sucking tits in the middle of the American dream. I'm not saying morality. I'm not saying they're bad parents. I'm just saying sometimes people like to have a little fun. Oh, I'm not Although, saying that. How old were they? They were in their late 20s, early 30s, early to mid, I would say 25 to 35. 
That's 10 years, Frank. Yeah, that's a good... You couldn't get like an idea? Like they looked around our age bro, is what you're saying? Bro, bro, bro. Remember what you were saying to me the other day? 13-year-olds look like they're 25 now. Remember how passionate you were about saying that the other day? Frankie, when you... <laughs> how come every time you do one of those jokes, it's always about pedophilia? <laughs> what the fuck? You were just saying this, bro. You know what's funny? Yesterday, I made a joke about someone being a Nazi or something. Mm -hmm. I forgot what I said. Online? No, no, no. To per like persons. To, to In a group chat. Mm-hmm. Um, not my... The group chat... No, don't even start. Okay, all right. Just wanted to make sure. But <laughs> not like the main group chat that I have, but a different one where there's a bunch of different a characters. A different one that I'm not in. Yes. Go. Cool. Bunch of different characters. Yeah. You're not in it for choice. Uh, but so there's a lot of... I don't of, know if that's real. So, so there's a lot of different characters in there. And I made a joke about someone being a Nazi or something. Oh, I said something about... This was when... um You know, you heard about Sydney Sweeney? Yeah, did I? Her, the internet her has family been tearing is tearing like, her apart. Yeah, like they had a hoe down for her mom's birthday or something, and then like her grandma was in the back wearing a Trump hat, and it's like, all right, whatever. Yeah. Did um, you see like the memes of like her dad watch? Like you saw, remember in the boys when he's uh, Homelander's watching a movie like this? Yeah. It was that meme, and it said Sydney Sweeney's family watching her take back shots from a black dude in Euphoria. <laughs> I was fucking dying. I was like, God damn. It didn't take 20 minutes for that shit to pop up. Someone, I did see someone post a picture of her brother, and he was in like a full like cowboy sort of look, and mm -hmm. they're like, this dude definitely watches his sister's sex scenes. I was like, ew. I forgot. Uh, please, I, I don't remember the name of the, uh, the heavyset Greek comedian. He's like a fat Greek comedian. He's fucking hysterical. I, I forget his name. What? I don't know. Okay. But he posted, he's like, I for one am shocked. That Sydney oh, Savi. Yeah, that Sydney Sweeney, a blonde white girl who works on classic cars as a Republican camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was like during that and I like made a joke and I was like I was like, honestly, gran her grandma could be a neo Nazi, but those bags. <laughs> like I was just like joking around. And then one of the people in the chat were like Oh, they took the moral high ground? No. They said even more confusing. We're like you're like obsessed with Nazis. I was like, what? Huh? I was confused by that. I was like, I was like, obsessed. <laughs> like, yeah, I saw a clip from your podcast where you were talking about uh, Hitler's dick. I was like, oh, I was like, he's like, he's like, I know he said, he said, I saw a clip where you were talking about Hitler recently and now this. And I'm like, w I was talking about how his dick was trash, not that his <laughs> politics were like sick. I was like, one. And two, what a weird comment yeah, to have. Yeah, that's a weird. It's like, yo, you're obsessed with fucking Nazis. And I'm like, are you upset that I make a joke about what's happening? Yeah, that's why you know, like, like, you're, like, you're, like, you're very defensive. Yeah, I was like, yo, I almost, I gotta be honest, from what you're saying, I almost know who it you is. You would have no idea. Really? Yeah, you have, you would have, it was so, I was like, what the fuck are you talking Regardless, about? Regardless, that is a weird thing to say. Well, I mean, then they shouldn't watch the show because wait until they hear how obsessed with the fucking Christian religion we are. Yeah, I'm turning the Nazi shit up, by the way. Um, but, uh, why? Where was I going? Oh my god! I was gonna tell some other story though that was not related to Sydney Sweeney at all. Um, uh, you started with Sydney Sweeney, and I think you were photo booths. Photo booths. Let's go back to photo booths first. Then. Yeah. Okay. One time, not that anyone pulled their tits out, but there was like a little like, <laughs> like whatever. Yeah, the fake, the fake pulling a tits out. It was my cousin's wedding. This was oh. like fucking ten years ago, maybe, or like seven years ago, or something, and. Uh, the, all the like they don't print the photo booth. I, I think, oh maybe they. It's like the them. wedding one. Yeah, they print it right there. They print it, but then also the bride and groom get all of them. Gotcha. Okay. So they could like look through them or whatever the yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah, they digitize. And I think it's like you can leave like a video too. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. It. So it was like one of those things, or that's what I think it was. It was a photo booth, but it also was like a video that you can leave for the bride and groom. So. They're going through it, and all of a sudden, they sent our entire family this thing. It was just two random people. That no clue who they were. No, and they like made, left a video being like, yeah, we crashed your wedding, and it was fucking sick. Hope you guys don't mind, like, whatever. <laughs> it's fucking that's awesome. Pretty, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it was like this couple. I was like, damn, that's fire, dude. Yeah, people need to be. Bro, Yo, would you crash a wedding? Like, 100,000 percent, I would do it. Me too. We've spoken about this. I've actually, uh, since I'm back on Cameo, uh, the Frank Albert, um, People have on Cameo been like, yo, like we want to seriously invite you to a wedding. Yeah, but that's not crashing. I know, but like... 
It's not crashing. But they don't invite us like they're gonna come. It's like, oh, it'd be we're getting married in fucking you know Hoboken. It'd be hysterical if you showed up, just and the then we just in. fucking show up. Because you know who would be happy? The one person that invited us. Yeah, right. You know who Everyone would not? Like, who the fuck is that? Everybody else. Yeah. Because that would be like, bro, think about it like this: like if we open crash, bar the open bar. Open bar is tough. I one thousand percent think before we die, we should crash. Just just crash a random wedding. It has to be so good about it. And what happens? You just get, like, thrown out. You don't get, like, arrested, do you? Is it trespassing? I don't think it's trespassing unless it's, like, you actually it might be trespassing because if you're not meant to be on the premises, like, at the fucking venue, you could probably get in a little bitty, bitty, bitty trouble. So, like, the venue might be able to say, like, they weren't supposed to be here. It's trespassing. But, like, you just need to pick a rad venue and just, like, people that just, like, they a have, like, a big wedding. Like, definitely. Bro, like a, like big a, wedding, and yeah. it can't be too serious. Like a Hamptons wedding, I think is so easy to crash. No, I would say not a Hamptons wedding because that's people because that, those are rich people that don't even like know who's there. No, but that's bro, rich people take the fucking weddings hyper serious. No, no, no. You need to go to like a fucking, you know, like a random venue on Long Island that no. has like four weddings going at once. Oh yeah, that. And then you just walk in. And then be like, oh shit, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong thing. If no, you get caught, even, if you get caught. Not even like, that. Oh shit, wrong I, I've <laughs> not even that. Just walk in and just like like the first thing you need to do is you need to go right to the bride and groom and congratulate them. That's the first thing you have to do. Because if they... If, you, if people see you interacting with them, they're not going to question it. I guess. Then you I would just go to the bar, chill, wait for like a song where a lot of people out there and just start dancing. No, because then you stick out like a sore thumb. People are going to look at the bar because that's where people go the most, Joey. They're going to be like, who the fuck is this? No one looks at the bar. They look at the dance floor. They see who they can make no fun of. No one looks at the bar, well. dude. No one looks at the bar. Are you nuts? People are looking at the bar in, in the wedding all the time. I don't look at the bar. Yeah. I look at the bar when I'm making a beeline for it. I, yeah. need, a, I need another. Which is quite frequent at a wedding. Every eight minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that's what you should do. And we should do that. We should definitely crash a wedding. And if they have one of Damn. those photo boots, yeah. it's going down. Who? Uh, Dom and Lisa's wedding, they had a photo booth. And I have two dozen pictures from that wedding. Do they? Yeah. Did they? Yeah. I don't remember. I do remember walking out and they had like a pop or cotton candy machine or something. Bro, they they went all out. And the parting gift was a bottle of wine. I didn't get a parting gift because I was, I had to leave early because I was too drunk. I took the shuttle back because I was a groomsman. Oh yeah, that's right. But I remember, uh, so the parting gift was a bottle of wine Mm. and like Pete and Espo and whoever like took an Uber back to Astoria and to open the bottle of wine, they took the headrest off of the Uber driver's seat genius and put it through and just pushed the cork in. That's genius. <laughs> and they drank the Absolutely whole genius. Yeah. I was like, wow, it's amazing. It's so drink you, it. Yo, what is it about? Never mind. You go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go. 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 I was gonna say something, and I'll say it. Drinking brings out the most creative fucking lawbreaker in you. <laughs> I was gonna say, there's something about drinking in a car. Yeah. <laughs> No, listen, obviously I don't... Not driving, not driving. Yeah. Because that's not fun. Uh, but sitting in the back of a car. I remember one time, <laughs> it was my cousin's 30th birthday. We went to his party. It was out in Long Island, and I had my car. But I t- my mom was like, I'll drive you home. So I was like, all right, I'll drive there. And this is when I had my BMW. It was a convertible. So What else about your awesome BMW, Joe? <laughs> but there's a point to that. So, awesome <laughs> German engineered convertible. Go ahead. So top of the line, fully souped. Um, no, but my mom was driving us home, and we I got hammered at this thing. And then we're like, oh, we're going out. We're going to a bar or whatever. And I'm like in the back seat, and me, my cousin, and whoever else is in the car, we're just drinking, <laughs> which is super illegal in New Very, York. don't do With it. With the top down. And my Double. mom's driving my car, and I'm posting it on my Instagram story. And I, it was up for like 10 minutes, and I was like, that's a horrible idea. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's even worse? To talk about it on the show, probably. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, Statue what of Limit I, I don't know what the Statue of Limitations is on drinking in a car. It, it might be. You're going to have to prove it. I could be lying. I'm making it, it up. He's 100% right. It's all hearsay at this point in time. Can't take this show as an admission of guilt. If you did, we'd both be in big-time trouble. Yeah, I've said some stuff. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, I, I, in a, like, I don't understand why you can drink in a limo and a party bus, but not in a car. 
I like, think, no, I think listen, has, like, there has to be a partition. All right, which so, there isn't on a party bus. Yes, no, there, no, is. there is. There is. There is. Sometimes some some party buses do have a partition. Yeah, some, some don't. don't. But like, I don't. I, it might also be illegal to drink on a party bus. We might be kind of wor- working ourselves into a no corner way. Here. What's the point of getting a party bus if you're not going to drink on it? The idea is to dance and get driven and fall over onto people. Drunk. I know that's the cool part of it, but I'm saying yeah. like I don't think the purpose of it. But like a limo, bro. People drinking limos like it's like known. If you see a limo, you're like, yo, people are drunk in that thing right limos now. Limos suck. I don't know. I don't agree with that there, but I don't like limos. I like limos. I haven't been in one in a long time. Last time I was in a limo was... Probably Dom's wedding. That's a party bus. I thought you guys took a limo. No, it was a bus. Oh, okay. It was a big-ass bus. We took it to fucking Times Square. Uh, yeah, that... Uh, sounds I was like, I'm hammered in Times Square yeah, right now, dude. I've never been drunk in Times Square, but it sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, no, it's sensory overload. But I, I was in... An, the last time I was in a, a limo... Um, I left like Espo's hockey game, and I told him like he when he went to NYU. No, no, I I know when he played. No, hockey. I know. So listen, why the fuck were you in a limo? <laughs> because we left. It was he was playing at I think it was like near Chelsea Piers or whatever, and we were walking and like the bar we were going to was like walking distance. It was like a decent walk, but whatever. So we're walking by, just like on the street, and I see a limo, and like if I'm pretty chatty. When I'm out in the wild and like I saw this guy and his window was down and I'm like, oh, you got I'm it. asking yeah, for a no, ride. There's no, you have to at that point. And I was like, yo, do you, and it was just me, Eric oh, and boy. Espo. That's it. Uh, so you have all three levels of chattiness there. Yeah. Well, like, <laughs> well, like Espo who doesn't talk, <laughs> you who's medium chatty and Eric who will fucking talk the paint off the wall. <laughs> but we pulled up on this guy and uh, we were like, yo. Do you want to drive us to this bar? Like, like how much to drive us to this bar? Um, it's like, it wasn't even a mile away. It was like a half a mile away or something. Mm-hmm. And he was like, 40 bucks. And I was like, no way. And I started walking away. He's like, 30 bucks. I was like, get in. <laughs> <laughs> you told him to get in. No, oh, you told the other guys to yeah, get in. Yeah, I was like, get in. That was your limo. And then we took a, uh, took a limo fucking nine blocks Bro, for $30. It was just hilarious. Honestly, you know what I want to do so bad? Just get a limo and just drive around Manhattan. Don't go anywhere and just drink in the limo and bring maybe like a little pee bottle or two or three or four. Bring a pee bottle? Yeah, so you could pee in it, you know, because when I drink, I have once I break the seal, I'm peeing every 20 minutes. There's you no- would rather be in a limo than a party bus? Um, kind of, because a limo, a you can, it's cool to sit in. Like, standing up is the evil part of the fucking party bus, because the moment they make one turn, you're getting your head smacked against a window. No, bro, in a limo, you can't move around. You want to talk to yeah, the you groups. Do. You gotta, like, you gotta, like... Bro, limos fall. have the big back seat. It has fucking seats along the side and a seat all the way on the back. That's why you always see people crash... Like, anytime you hear about, like, or see something in a limo, it's someone crashing down... <coughs> With a yeah. fucking bottle and like, yeah. you know, like just like enjoying the time of their lives and a New Year's Eve fucking 1998 hat. Yeah. Like, that's what I want. I would like to have sex on a limo. That would be cool. Yeah, that doesn't sound cool. Really? Yeah, why, dude? Because it's like, it feel, that feels luxurious. Does it? Yeah. It feels like it is the most basic thing that everyone else in their life has probably tried. Dude, I don't think that people are in limos that often. Bro, you're going to tell me that... I'm not saying most people go in limos often. I'm saying the people that have been in limos, you think they're not trying to fucking spit Bro, in each other's... I think people are trying to get blown everywhere. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. what I'm saying is that's the most basic thing. That's like going, you know, to fucking, you know, kissing the Blarney Stone when you're in Ireland. Like, everyone does it. It's become like a thing at this point in time. I honestly don't even know what that is. It's a fucking stone that people pee on in Ireland that people go and kiss for good luck. People knowingly kiss this thing full of, full of piss? I, I think the tourists don't know it's full of piss, but the locals have like pretty openly like discussed like, oh, we're piecing on it all the time. Piecing. Yes. <laughs> I have to go take a piece. That's actually a good way to like get back at tourists. Yeah, it's really show them. That's why New York City completely smells like piss. Yeah. Hey, you can't <laughs> you can't get back at a tourist if the whole place smells like piss. I saw actually it's funny enough a New York City story. Uh, one of the girls that I met in Mykonos is from Fidei. She just posted to, on, on her story this morning. Last night at 5 a.m., a homeless guy decided to set on fire all of the garbage in Fidei. Nice. Dude, giant fires. It looked like a scene out of a Batman movie. Bro, I... Just fucking... I believe it. Then, I, I've been in Fidei multiple times She pans, 
fires yeah, down dude. the street. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. It's kind of awesome. I'm There's also a there. lot of garbage on this. But honestly, on like garbage, set nights. fire, burn, eat the rich. You know what I'm saying? If anyone's gonna get their fucking fire all over the place, it should be in fight, fight die. Well, AKA for those of you guys not from New York, or that's New where Jersey, they work though. The financial district. That's where they work though. Upper West Side. That's where you're gonna start burning stuff. Upper West is the high end. No, yeah, that's I think where, like, the rich I think people Tribeca live. is the fucking well, like, that too, big money. That too. Soho, Soho, Tri- those are more pretentious. Well, they're rich too. They're they're rich is rich, Joey. You all <laughs> you all suck. <laughs> I was like when you said you like last time before you're in your current place when you said you were looking for a new spot. I was like, God Almighty, please don't be in fucking Manhattan. Please, please, no, please, no, please, no. Please. I want to have a car. I don't want to live in Manhattan. You're gonna have a car, car and live in Manhattan. You would just yeah, have to pay a thousand dollars extra a month for a fucking parking spot. It would be at least like six hundred dollars for parking. Hundred percent. Oh yes, absolutely. In Long Island City, my parking is three hundred. Ooh, that, and that's kind of honestly cheap. My parking now, one fifty. But you're also paying probably more for your place now than you were in Long Island City. Yes, but when I was moving out, it was the same price. Wow. So if we so my apartment so now it, it, is probably it was like a lateral what it, is. it was a lateral move basically. No, no, no. I moved into an apartment that was significantly cheaper when I moved out of Long Island City. Yes, into that that other place, yeah. but like the place you're at now. Yeah, the place I'm at now is, is more expensive. No, it was like the same price. Oh wow. Well, you also had like two floors. Three, yeah. f- uh, one, two, three, and the roof. That place was sick. I was actually was. listening to an old Basement Yard episode we recorded in there, and boy, oh boy, wild. I listen to old episodes not because I'm a narcissist, but because I try to get ideas for new Patreon episodes. <laughs> and uh, boy, what a time. Yeah, you're not a narcissist. Narcissist? Uh, well, I might be a narcissist. Narcissist. Um, all right, let's get to the ads for today. Uh, the first one being FitBod. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get fit, it's never too late to do that, and FitBot's going to help you on that journey. Um, and they understand that uh, getting the most optimal workout plan is difficult if you have nowhere, if you don't know what you're doing. So people who just go online and they search like a workout plan, it may it's not really catered to you or your needs or what you want. You know, some people want to lose weight, some people want to like lean out but stay muscular some people just want to pack on muscle like there's a lot of different things you want to do and uh their smart workout app creates a custom dynamic exercise program based on your goals experience and equipment Uh, if you have no equipment by the way they also offer plans for you uh to just do like body weight stuff also in the comfort of your own home um with this app you, you don't need a gym you can do it in your living room if you have some dumbbells or whatever you just tell them what you have and they will make something for you um not only that but they will teach you new exercises they have like hd videos and explain like how to do each exercise um also their algorithm uses data and analytics to scientifically build your best uh next workout and maximize results okay also rest is a very important part of that so that is also kind of built into this and uh, it also um, can be uh, attached to like Fitbit or you know Strava or any of these apps that people use to track their uh, movements. Um, but yeah, you can get 25% off your subscription or try out the app for free when you sign up at fitbod.me slash basement. That is 25% off your subscription or try it for free at fitbod.me slash basement. All right, so go check them out. Uh, next up, we have HelloFresh. HelloFresh. You get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Uh, you know, you go on their site, you pick out the ones that you like, and you're like, you know what? These are the things I want to make. Get sent to your house in pre-portioned ingredients, like I said, and then it gives you a little uh, fucking recipe, and then you cook the whole thing. They teach you how to cook it. You can keep it. You know, I have a bunch in my uh, in like my pantry, like right on the side. And uh, I just pull them out, look through it. It's like, oh, I can go buy this stuff again and make it again. Um, you know, the good ones. But, yeah, it's great. It's a great way to uh, not only learn how to cook new things and make, like, new and exciting things, but also save money because it's more expensive. It's less expensive than going out to eat at a restaurant or ordering in every day. Um, you know, this is nice. You get some cooking experience. You get a great meal. You get uh, high-quality food. And, um, yeah, so you can go to HelloFresh.com slash Basement16 and use the code Basement16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free, free gifts. So that's a lot, 16 free meals. That's a ton of money when you think about it. When you compare it to, like, 16 meals at a restaurant or 16 meals that you're ordering in, 
a lot of money you're saving there. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Basement16 or use the code Basement16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Um, and lastly here, we do have Stamps.com, uh, which brings all of the services of the uh, U.S. Postal Service to your front door, to your front door, to your bedroom, wherever your computer is, that's where it brings it. Uh, you just sign on to their website, Stamps.com, and you can buy and print official U.S. postage um, and it's amazing. And not only are you saving time because you don't have to drive to the post office and wait in lines or anything like that, but you're also saving money. There are discounts that you can only get online. Um, some of them are just insane. Uh, up to 86% off USPS and UPS rates. So you'll be saving a ton of money by doing this online. And it's also very convenient. So if you have a small business and you're you know, moving a lot of packages and stuff, it's the best way to do it using stamps.com. Um, you could sign up with the promo code BASEMENT for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and enter the code BASEMENT. All right? And while you're at it, make sure you go check out Patreon, patreon.com slash The Basement Yard. Look, guys, we tell you about the Patreon all the time. But quite frankly, it's the best bang for your buck if you want more of The Basement Yard. Uh, there are two tiers that you really, really, really want to be interested in because there's that first tier where you get these weekly episodes. Well, guess what? A week in advance. A week before everybody else. Sex. Seven days. I said sex. I don't sex. know why. You don't, get, Whoa. you don't get sex with it. You get the episodes six days before before in that second tier well, that's where you get exclusive episodes every single friday and additional content that is not necessarily an episode that is just additional drops i.e joey taking an enema i.e me getting my uh, bud waxed uh, and also if you guys sign up and get us to twelve thousand patrons which we are creeping oh so close it started the new month so it dropped down a little bit but guess what we get to twelve thousand. joey and i are going to hire a new york based drag makeup artist and we're gonna go full drag baby we're gonna document the process and then we're gonna do a patreon episode in full drag so we definitely 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 want you to check it out patreon.com slash the basement yard one of the best ways to support us please go check it out tell your friends give the gift of the patreon page uh, basement yard on patreon patreon.com <laughs> <laughs> i fucking petered out at the end there i love patreon on patreon, patreon i love that we call patreon. it petered out like it's just like you just i've never up. even heard that Who, term you've never heard of the term petered out petered out no like I <clears throat> petered out like you fall off at the end there. Who's Peter? What did he do to deserve such ridicule? I have no idea, dude. I uh, probably did something uh, pretty pretty bad. Yeah. His, his popularity petered out. Just keep doing it. No, I have to stop. Yeah. Um, anyway, big news. Mm -hmm. Leonardo DiCaprio and his girlfriend broke up. Now single Leo. Single Leo. He's going to have back. so much trouble finding a new partner. I mean, listen, man. Some people have harder times than others. Um, but uh, we've spoken about Leo quite quite a bit. Obviously, head member of what he has coined the Pussy Posse. The, the pussy Posse. Pussy which Posse. Is, which is a posse of men who are gallivanting around town getting pussy. Yes, and quite frankly, he is the most rich and famous of the group. So I don't know why anyone else in that group. They probably all like really clamor at the fact they call themselves that. It's like him, Kevin Connolly from Entourage, fucking like Tobey Maguire, I think. A lot of people that I would not guess were in a posse of pussy. Well, yeah, Tobey Maguire, I see him. I don't think, whoa, watch out, Mr. Pussygetter's coming. Yeah. I would think, like, who the fuck is this little dweeb that is trying to steal my chemistry calculator? <laughs> <laughs> so I think what we can do is kind of go through his girlfriends here and kind of maybe figure out what's going on because the big thing with Leo is that uh, he's never dated anyone 26 years old over the age of 25 yeah everyone's been 25 or younger um, which is weird right since, since and he is 47 he's a 47 year old man and he's been doing this since he was 24 this is this is the thing that confuses me has he ever dated up he's never dated up ever well because there is no up what was he, 24, dating a 25-year-old? No. Well, he could have. I guess. But, but he, he never. He never. So he's only dated women younger than him. Uh, That's yeah. weird, man. What happens when you're 18? So I guess it's not weird if you're 18 dating a 17-year-old. This all started when he was 24 years old. And so, he started dating? 20. No. He, no. Uh, no. 19. 18? Giselle. G uh, Miss, uh, uh, Giselle Brady. Bunchen. Tom Brady. Bunchen? Isn't that it? I don't know. I, I, it looks like Bunchin, but I don't. I don't know that that's the name. Bunchin. I will say that Bunchin is a horrible last name. Well, she's a, she's a to the bame balaze. What'd you say? She's a to the bame. What does that mean? She's a chuchuca brasileira. Oh, okay. So this is how she talks. <laughs> 
Frankie dated a Brazilian. He could say that. I could say that, right? <laughs> but he started when he was 24. He dated her when she was 18. Okay. Till she was 23, and he was 29. And then he's like, no more. Then they broke up. Probably, probably, you know, some. So let's differences. see. If he's 47, he was 23, 24 years ago, which was 1998. No, 1999. He was 24. She was 18. That's when they started dating. Okay. Then in 2004. Uh, three years after 9-11 She was oh, 23 <laughs> Can't do that man <laughs> You can't not, not on the day This comes out the day after 9-11 Oh shit He had his dad was a firefighter You can make those I jokes I can say that my dad was a you firefighter say it. They lost so many men um, Then when he turned 30 he started dating Bar Raffaele. Don't know who that is, but it sounds like a pasta. <laughs> Yo, Bar Raffaele sounds like a delicious special. It's like it's not on the menu, but we got a Bar Raffaele that'll blow your fucking tits <laughs> off, lady. Listen, a special for tonight. We have fresh Parmesan and a Bar Raffaele. You're yeah, going to fucking blow your mind. So a Bar Raffaele is served with the bone in, and then you put a little cheese on top and you fucking melt it. It's and then for the right price, if you ask really nice, we'll do some fresh fucking lobster on top of the bar, Raphael. Yeah, and we're side of, of Bunchin. <laughs> Giselle Bunchin. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then he broke up with her. And then he was like, fuck that, 23 years old. And he turned 30. And then he started dating 20-year-old. Okay, weird. Bar Raphael. Bro, uh, hold on. This is the, this is it's the part. One, it's, uh, when you think about it, it's 10 years. But honestly, it's only one decade. No, dude. That is a big 10 years. Frankie, it's a one Bro, decade. Bro, look at you at 20. Yeah, look at no. you at 20 and look at you at 30. You think you'd be able, like, Joey at 20 would be like, Yikes. yo, like, where are sluts and where, like, I need a four loco. And then Joey at 30 would be like, I need, I need a dry red. I need to discuss the business tactics and synergy moving forward. Bro, you would hate yourself. Yeah. How could you, like, honestly, and, and I, I mean this across, like, whatever fucking sexual orientation, but, like, your experiences and uh, at the age of twenty and who you are at thirty. Why did you say sexual orientation? Like, because it's not dudes? it's not only like men like older men and younger women. It could be men and men, women and women, ba 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 ba, um, whatever. Wow, really inclusive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. This also applies to fucking lesbians too. <laughs> and ba 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 ba. <laughs> but like, you can fucking like, it's just so different. Like, bro, thirty and twenty is a radical change. It's big, but. Not as big as a, as one of the <clears throat> drops are coming. So, Bar Raffaele, from 05 to 2010, big years there. That's big years. 05 to 2010, okay, those all right. Those were the glory years. We played a lot of manhunt in those years. We did, years. we did. I got my heart broken a couple times. Me too, for sure. Yeah. Um, thirty. So, he dated her. From 30 to 35. 30 to 35. She was 25. Then he was like, old bitch, get out. Oh. Then he dated uh, Blake Lively for a year. Must have been in between Ryan Reynolds. I don't know when they started dating. Yeah, because Ryan Reynolds, uh, uh, well, Blake Lively. Oh, I'm thinking of different shit. Yeah, it was because I think him and her met on the set or filming or something like that with Green Lantern, which came out in 2011. So he probably dated Blake Lively, and then Ryan Reynolds came in. He was like, hi there. You know, his quick little, yeah. you know, charming self. He's yeah. like, what do we have? You know, yeah. just, you know, being a Ryan Reynolds. Damn, you're fucking horny. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, you are, no, dude. I'm not. Look at you. You're fucking I'm not, horny. I'm not horny for Bro, Ryan you're Reynolds. horny. I'm not. So who's next? I don't know. You're horny. It's distracting <laughs> me. But he dated Blake Lively when he was 36. Okay. She was 23. All right. That's a big drop, Big dude. jump, but, uh, you know. But women mature older. Uh, wait, well, hold. That's not... <laughs> Fucking shot, bro. <laughs> they mature older. Women mature quicker. Right. So like a 23-year-old woman, you she's know. She's really 25. If you curve it, you know, she's really like 28. Okay. Um, that lasted a year. And she, he was like. And then Ryan hey, Reynolds you know. swooped then in. Then he, he dated Aaron Heather, Heatherton, who I don't know That's who that is. That's British, dude. Um, he was 37. She was 22. 15 years. Bro, imagine right now. Like, put yourself, just put yourself in the thought process of trying to date a 15 year old. No. <laughs> <laughs> I will not do that. <laughs> the fuck? Um, okay, next. Tony Garen. <laughs> <laughs> what? Tony 
Garn. How do you spell the last name? How I'm saying it, try to spell it. Garn. <laughs> Garn? Garn. G Y R N. No, no. G A. G. Garn. Yeah. A U A. No, I don't know why. I don't know why you. I thought you would get it. What? It's G A R R N. I just Garn. Garn. Right, whatever. Tony Garin. So he now he's 38. And she's? 20. Dude, that's a lot. 18 years. That's a adult, that's a, adult that's child. A, that's an adult life in between. That's wild. Bro, who? Why? All right, hold on. Two years, too. They gave, gave her one, more than one year. I have a daughter. I have another one on the way. If at 20 years old, she said, here's 38-year-old fucking multi-million dollar Leonardo DiCaprio. First of all, I'd be like, kind of sick. But then I'd be like, no fucking way, dude. I'd be, I'd be like, how did you meet him? Where were you? You're 20. Dude, 20 is still 18. Yeah. What? what? 20 is still 18. Those people are like, I waited until I'm dating a 19-year-old. It's like uh, still weird. It's still weird at 20. 20, 22, 21, I think, is when it's not weird anymore. Sure. Okay. But... If my daughter was like, I'm dating Leonardo... I mean, if my daughter said she was dating Leonardo DiCaprio, I'd be like, I bet she's 90. Come on. What are we doing? Because by that time... Yes, yeah. You're not but, having kids uh, for a while. <laughs> oh, you just get old quick. Bro, your daughter dates him at 18. He'll be fucking 70 or something. Um, I'm but, trying to think. What's the age difference right now? Who's 19? Who's 19? Do you know any 19-year-olds in your circle? What are the... No. Who's the... Maybe my... my no, my cousins are like seventeen. Bro, I'm just, I'm trying to think of it like um, putting it in perspective of like our child, like Ruby or Miles. Miles is seven, so if someone was twenty five and dating Miles, I mean it's worse when you do it like that, because it's not like if you're if you're like twenty six and you're dating someone who's like thirty six, whatever, like still whatever, but it's not that crazy. But if you're 26 and you're dating a 16-year-old, you're like, what the fuck? Well, that's because the law comes into play. Sure. I'm saying it's still weird. Like, it, it, not weird as and much as it's as like... As it goes higher, it's hard. it gets less weird. It's hard. Like, I, the, the big story... I remember the big one that came out years and years and years ago where it was like the biggest thing was when fucking Ashton Kutcher was dating Demi Moore. That was like the first story I could think yeah. of of like the people were looking at the age gap like, oh my God. And like everyone was she talking was like about it. was like 40-something? And he was 20. Demi Moore Ashton Kutcher That's what I'm saying But I'm thinking about it Like bro In a relationship You want to Fucking stand the person and Be able to talk to them If I'm a 40 year old Where I will be at 40 I wouldn't be yeah. able to talk And have a conversation With a 20 year old I, Where yeah. I am at 30 I want to Fucking I wouldn't be able to do it With a 20 year old Yeah that would be tough But he does it I don't know how Becca does it with me And she's in her 60s Yeah well That's the thing I think she <laughs> She might be senile that's Gotcha that's gotcha, gotcha. Um, <laughs> But Tony Garen, she yeah. was she was twenty. I think it's Garen, by the whatever. way. She was twenty and he was thirty-eight. Bro, I didn't realize how old. I was gonna say whatever. I thought I didn't know Leo was that old. Bro, uh -oh. he was tw he was thirty in two thousand five. Okay, that feels like he's so much older than I thought. But uh, gangs in New York, twenty and twenty-one when he was thirty-nine. When he was forty, so twenty twenty. So he went. Nope, that's not how that works. That's not how numbers work. This is the first time, guys, ladies and gentlemen. This is the first time that he stopped dating a girl and then dated an older one. This is his first jump. So he stopped. So he didn't go lower on the age. No, I mean he was at twenty-one for God's sakes. How much lower can you get without one, getting in trouble? One, two, three years technically. Yeah, technically, but I mean he's in trouble anyway for all this. But um, so. 2015 dated Kelly Rohrbach. Uh, she's a an actress, isn't she? Beats me. The Kelly name sounds familiar. I might just Rohrbach. be Rohrbach. She's an actress. Okay. Dude, googled her name. All I see is cheeks. Okay. She's cute. What movies has she been in? Like fucking Baywatch. That kind of shit. They're all blondes, by the way. Every single one of these people are blonde. I think. Every single one. No brunettes. No. Uh, the newest one was. The uh, newest one. Yo, fucking humanize them. They're people, Joey. Jesus Christ, you rich people. I didn't know her name. This. You love to do this. Shut up. Um, then he, he dated her for a year. It was like, ew, so old. Then he started dating Nina Agdal. Who's that? Model. Okay. 2016, she was 24. Then 25, then he was like, Ugh, and then left. We're getting close. So he was like, he felt yeah. a little uncomfortable. 
Yeah, I don't think he likes women that Why? are on their parents' health insurance. He's like, because yeah. once you turn 26, you're off the, it. Then they want to go on his. Yeah, he's like, no. And he's like, no, 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 I make way too money to, much money to help you. That's the thing. And then she was 25, so he had he had two girls that were 25 years old in the span of three years, and that really fucking threw him off. And he was like, I'm fucking finished with this. So we went back down to 21. You think, he, you know what? It's got to be. I'm telling you right now, he's got to be drinking their blood. Because there's this conspiracy with rich people out there that you guys are drinking the blood of the youths. You guys. And that it helps keep you feeling youthful. Although I will say this. If he is doing it, he looks like dog shit. All right? He does, he, his acting skills still there. Amazing. But doesn't really look great. No, but he's also 47. Yeah, but men are supposed... Like, the idea is like the societal standard is that men are supposed to become like a seasoned wine. You know, they get better looking with age. That's I mean, what I tell myself, and I can almost guarantee yeah. that people say that about Leo. He is not. He no. is kind of looking a little not great. No, he he was a very good looking man, and then he wasn't. You know, he was good looking in Titanic. He's he's got to be charming though. He's got to be charming, absolutely. You know, um, but then but you know what else is charming? Camilla Marone. Yes, the fact that he's Leonardo DiCaprio, and also, well, sure. But everyone's all of these people, uh, all of these people, every single one of these girls, probably exclusively around this time, was either hooking up with or dating people either as rich or a little bit less rich. But like at a certain point, it doesn't fucking matter. Anyone who has a, who flies private and goes to all these parties and invited to all these people, that's who these people were. Yeah, like what's the so what's the difference? Him. What's the difference between two hundred million and one hundred fifty million? You know, like, to them nothing. Because that's what I'm just, saying. It's, yeah. it's it's fifty million, but like it's still a lot. But they wouldn't know. So then he dated this uh, Camilla Marone from 2018 to whenever the fuck the other day, uh, from 21 to 25. Bro, this is weird. And now he's back on the market. So can he pull off? Will Leo? He, I mean, he, it took a while to get his Oscar. Will it take a while for him to get his first twenty-six-year-old? Stay tuned. What, folks. what's going to happen next? Will he get another Oscar, or will he date someone over the age of twenty-six? I like to think that at this point you have a duty to keep a streak going. Like why? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like why break it? You kind of like you're living this lifestyle. Just keep up with it. I also think that he like. I don't think that the age stuff should matter after twenty five. Like if you're twenty six, I, I think and you're dating a fifty year old. Like whatever, you're twenty six. You're not like like you're still like young. It's tough, but it, you're like come on, like do it's tough. Do, it's do, tough because if you if you got a twenty six year old dating a fifty year old, yeah, that's that's just yeah. You're and still it's not gonna be weird. like, well, look, it's it's weird. People think it's weird because of like the age difference and like sure, but it's more about life experiences. And I think what we're seeing here... Yeah, but you can experience life a whole lot quicker when you have someone who can just take you everywhere. Yes, I agree. But that's not necessarily what's going to help you be, build and become a better person during that life. I think what I'm seeing here is that Leo might be afraid of getting older. And he's doing, like... I'm not saying he's like... You know, remember how, like, people... Oh, man, hold on. Follow me here. People talked a lot about Michael Jackson. But remember when they would talk about, like, how he, like, always tried to, like, remain like a kid... Like he would be like, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do the impression. Yeah. Like he wants to go on the Ferris wheel, and like he he wanted to watch movies in pajamas and stuff like that. We're we're not gonna talk about the other accusations. Pajamas, move forward. Uh, however, pajamas. John. Okay. Maybe Leo is just trying to remain feeling young. So like he hangs out and like wears sideward, you know, sideward, sideways baseball caps, yeah. and he like talks to them like guys, like he's on TikTok and stuff like that. I think. Leo is just trying to remain feeling young. So I would agree with you if all of these women weren't supermodels or like <laughs> very famous actresses. I think that he just thinks they're very attractive and he could still pull it off when he's gonna. Yeah, I, I don't know. There's something... At this point, if, you're, if you have no plan on having children and you're cool with that, and he probably is not doesn't want to have children because if he's about the environment, he's like, yo, the Earth's gonna be a piece of shit in like ten years. Yeah, ago. why make him? Why make a planet if everything is dust? So then, bro, I mean, go ahead, fucking date a twenty-five year old. Fuck, I care. Yeah, but there's something there's something dark to this, and I can't. But I mean, I mean, bro, this is what people said about fucking R. Kelly, and then three years later, they're finding out that he's running fucking rings of like keeping people from their family and shit. Well, so far there hasn't been any of that. 
is it weird? Is it weird? I don't I don't know if it's if it's weird. It's getting blurry. It's getting, <laughs> at a certain point it's getting blurry. blurring the line. Yeah, I don't know that you could be in your 40s dating a 20 year old 21 year old and no one's going to be like, "Bro." But like Bro, in your 50s? Yeah. But like this is what I'm saying, like but if you're dating like a fucking 25 year old until she's like 28 and you're like in your 50s, like you're just a rich guy who's like well, you know what I'm saying? No. But like also those women aren't going to be pushing for like marriages or children or anything like that. Like women in their 30s who feel like I need to start doing these sort of things, they have a biological clock. You don't have to deal with that sort of thing. So it's either he he skips this whole generation of like 30 to 35 and goes, you know, for him way older than he would like. Or he stays in this safe zone of girls who are just kind of like, yeah, I'm not trying to have kids or get married right now. I'm still young, and I'm like, whatever. That's a good point. That's a good idea. I think that's why he's dating there because that's – and maybe that's why – maybe not, though. I think that there are like – Maybe it also guys. has to do with like women over a certain – like, and I obviously know nothing about the women that he has already dated. But like they're in a place where they're still like starstruck by like certain like celebrities and stuff and like women that are of a little bit more of a mature – uh, mentality would be like, oh, all right, cool, Leo. And they don't fucking gas him up the way these young women do. I don't know. I don't know Leo. I don't know these women, so I don't want to say that. But I it's feel- a possibility. What, what I think is like Leo could be like he, he, a chill dude, right? Like you don't have to be spectacular because, one, you're Leonardo DiCaprio. Two, everyone knows that you're very rich. And three, you're just your lifestyle. The lifestyle that he lives is attractive to literally anybody. Guys, literally anyone. This is Joey trying to reason with me. So when he does it, I don't make fun of him for it. What? When I'm 50 dating? A when you're 50 and you just meet like a fucking like you know like she's 19 but she's really mature. She <laughs> listens to a lot of Tom she Petty. She smokes cigarettes for God's sake. <laughs> she loves Tom Petty. She knows all Andy Warhol no. art. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Joey's gonna say. You'd be like, bro, she read a book on Warhol. And I'll be like, dude, we talked no. about this. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just. <laughs> She knows all of Andy Ward. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I think that I, I hear what you're saying, but I think I, he just doesn't want to have kids, and he's like, no one's gonna push me to do this. But if you date like a 32 year old, he's gonna be like, bro, I kind of want children. Come on. Yeah, and he's I mean, like, nah, chill. I'd rather like recycle. Yeah, he'd be like, I don't want to give you kids, but I'd love to get fucking plastic out of the ocean. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> where's your priorities here? I guess. I mean, yeah. who am I, mean, I to judge? It's just Leo doing Leo things, I think. You know what I mean? I, it, it is kind of crazy. That, that is a good bet, though. If I had a sports book, I would put that on. It's like, what happens more? What what happens sooner? He dates someone over the age of 26, or he gets another Oscar. Let's place a friendly bet between us. We need odds, though. All right. I would say... You think it's more likely that he dates someone over 26? I do. I think it's more likely that happens. I would say that's more likely, too. But just for the sake of the show and entertaining the people, mm-hmm. I'll go that it's the, you know the Oscar thing. You'll go Oscar? Yeah, I'll go Oscar. I so would say, I have the other one, or you want to do it like I'm just the bank and you you have odds? All right, I don't know how to fucking do all this shit. It's like, we're going to call my fucking bookie, and we're going to... He sent me a free steak. No, so here's like, the thing. It's like, bro, let's just... You pick one, I pick the other. Whoever's right wins. Okay. You, no, but you're fucking... Needs, you're no, crumbling there, inside. No, but there needs to be odds, because if one is way more likely... We're not betting money. The loser has to no, fucking... No, we're betting money, bitch. Oh, of course. The fucking, you know... All right, let's bet 100 bucks. Frankie, you're not understanding. Because I don't know how to bet, Joey. I'm going to explain it okay, to you. Okay, the odds are... Fu- also, put your hat straight before I throw <laughs> up. I'm Leo. God. It's me. You look like I'll a- never let go. I'll draw your tits on a book in fucking parchment. 1912. You look like a, a like a a 40 year old skateboarder. <laughs> That's what he's a 47 year old. He's like going out and he's like, you guys trying to do that TikTok dance the other day? Woo, broke a sweat. Yeah, it's like this party is lit. It's like <laughs> Jesus. Leo. All right, okay, all right. So I would say that it's more likely he dates someone over 26. Okay. So let's say that is the the odds on favorite. So let's just say that's minus 200 then. And we'll do the other oh, one is even. We're 200? No, no, no. So the other one's even. So that meaning, are you, you're going to take the Oscar? Yeah. So then, and you're going to bet $100. So then you would win $100. But. And then you're the bank. So if I lose, I give the bank. Right. But if you were to take the other one, if you're like, no, I'm going to bet that it's the, he's going to 
date a girl first, then you would have to bet two hundred dollars to win a hundred. Bro, because it's more likely. I'm betting that he. Uh, fuck you. How about that? Okay. How about fuck you in this whole process? All right. All right fine. We'll just say whoever wins gets a hundred bucks. Let's yeah from the other person. Okay. And has to wear the shock collar for an episode. Stop. No. Because that's an episode on the Patreon. Patreon.com slash the basement yard. We put those fucking things on. They sucked. And you know what's funny? We're not going to remember this, but they're going to remember. Like Good. People always remember. Good, good, good. But we have a bet. It, does he win an Oscar or does he date someone over the... They have to be 26. They have to be. And like he could be dating someone that's 25. And, and it can't they, be rumored. And then they turn 26 when they're with him. And like they stay with him. He can... Yeah, that counts. That's cool. And it can't be rumored. It has to be like confirmed. Yeah, it can't be like, oh, Leo spotted with fucking, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because people are spotted. They're yeah, hooking bro, up to fucking Fucking assaulting. Vince McMahon was spotted the other day. You know, it doesn't mean shit. Yeah. All I'm saying is he needs to be like, it needs to like. Dating. We, we need to talk to TMZ and just say, yes, they They're are dating. Because yeah. TMZ is the reputable source that we're using here. Best company in the world. Probably the most important one. I would we say. We need to know what celebrities are doing every second of the day because that's who we care about. Oh, well, duh. Everything else is fake news except for when it comes to celebrities. Yeah. Then it's all real until proven otherwise. Right. Bingo. Which they sometimes that happens. Sometimes they say, hey, RIP, and they go, no, they're alive. Yeah, the burden of proof is not on the celebrity here. It's on... Well, no, excuse me. It is on the celebrity right. here. The TMZ will just say, like, yo, I saw, like, you know, uh, apparently fucking... Uh, Chris Hemsworth was out and he like pooped in you know the hat of a young child and it's like I believe it until I don't that was the story you made up huh I, I ought to, you want to know something I thought of other things and I censored them that was the censored version that came out perfect yeah um, alright so I'm just gonna probably try to make this happen send a bunch of 26 year olds Oh, like, you know, yo, you should really. Talk you know, a to bunch him. of twenty-six-year-olds you could send Leo's way. You fucking creep. No, I'm just trying to win. Though. You said, you know, what we got to do. We got to track his private jet on that website where you could track private jets. <laughs> and we need to wherever he is. We need to just like just send an influx of like people in their mid twenties there. Yeah. And see well, what happens. You know, people in Mykonos now. You can make it also, happen. if he dates someone over 35, that's $200 you got to give me. Oh, okay. And if he wins two Oscars before that, that's a, you get $100 for every Oscar he wins. $100 <laughs> Oscar for every... Okay, 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 okay. I'm done with that. Imagine he just never dates anyone ever And he never <laughs> wins an Oscar ever again. Oh, then it's a push. It, whatever that means. It means that no one gets paid. It pushes. Yeah. Yeah. But if he wins like four Oscars in between... If he wins four Oscars and before he, he dates someone 26... Before he dates anyone? 400 bucks. And if he starts dating... If we find out he's dating people that are 15, then we owe... I only owe 50 bucks. No, then we call the police. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's yeah. probably the best idea. Yeah. Um, All right, I'm getting this betting thing. <laughs> I'm figuring yeah. it out. If he dates it, only, someone, it only took uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's romantic life for me to get it. 35 and up, 200 bucks. Tears. 40, 45... Bro, 55? No, no, no. He's what if he dead. starts dating fucking Betty? Oh, she already went. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, if she, what if he starts dating like someone Streep? like Su Susan Sarandon? <sighs> That'd be fire. If he dates someone, if he ever dates someone over older than him, you have to give me like a thousand dollars. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. give you a thousand dollars every time I step in this fucking room, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll do something else. I'll get. I'll if get. He dates someone older than him. If he dates someone older than odds, him, I'll wear. Odds. I'll wear the the shot collar for a full episode. And money, five hundred dollars. Frankie, it's not gonna happen. I know, but chill. You know what I did could. yesterday? You know what I did yesterday? I was watching the U.S. Open. Medvedev, he's the favorite to win the whole entire thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was minus thirty five hundred before the game, before the match started, and. Uh, at, at, like he won the first game not the first set just one it was like one nothing you have to get six to win the set but uh at, at that point he was minus six thousand and i put five hundred dollars on him to win how much twenty eight dollars and 27 cents and it it so i'm richer today nailed it you honestly were you were you could have been speaking another language i didn't understand i gambled five hundred dollars to win eight dollars yeah. Essentially, which yeah. is not something you do. Yeah, you need to be stopped. <laughs> okay, we need eight bucks, babe. We need to figure out a way to have you Nailed cease it. operations. I should have done it before the match. It was minus thirty five hundred. I could have won like sixteen dollars. Yeah, you should have. 
Fuck. You wrap this the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Frank, where can they find you? You can find me getting some more of this uh, Secret Handshake Foods Everything Bagel Hot Sauce now back in stock. And uh, F Alvarez8085 on Twitter. The Frank Alvarez on Cameo. I'm back on Cameo and Instagram. Go check it out. And then make sure you go check out the Patreon. Patreon.com slash basement yard. Yep. And you guys can follow me at, do the, at the Joe Santagato. At Joe Santagato. And go follow the show at the basement yard on TikTok and Instagram. And that is all. See you guys next time.